Hello boys and girls, we're going to learn about how Christ is our Passover lamb. This is going to be part one, and you may be asking why is it important to understand this? Why is it important to understand prophecy? Jesus said, Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. When the word of God tells us something before it comes to pass, it reveals to us that Jesus is God. It is important to understand prophecy so we can affirm to ourselves and non-believers that there is a powerful creator. We are told that Jesus created all things and that he is the central theme of the Bible. So in this season, let's look at some prophetic events to see how Christ saved us on the cross of Calvary. We are going to see how Christ was the fulfillment of the Passover lamb in Egypt, what events took place the week Christ was crucified, and we will also look at why it is important for us to understand these events. You may have to go over this presentation several times to understand, but that is okay. Keep going over it. It is seeds of truth. And as you pray for the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and guidance, that Spirit will water those seeds and they will grow into a solid truth that you will be firmly planted on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. First, let's look at the events of the Passover and Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for an house, so that means every house should have a lamb. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. So if there was only one or two people in a family and the lamb, there was too much food for just them, then they could join another house. Let's continue reading. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water. So you couldn't soak it with water, it was to be roasted with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. Now pertinence means the center and the inward, so the lamb was supposed to be all it was supposed to be whole, not cut up. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So everyone was fully dressed and ready to go. Continue reading. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now that word token means a sign or a mark, or also it means a miracle. So when that angel saw that mark or that sign on the doorpost, 
That was the signal to pass over. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now let's break these verses down one by one. In part one, we're going to focus specifically on verses one and two. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, if we're wanting to pinpoint when did Jesus die for us, when was it that he was crucified on the cross as our Passover lamb, what month was that? What month is it for us today if we want to keep that as a memorial? So here we see a Jewish um, calendar that has our months associated with it. Now we see in this verse that the first month was the month of Abib. So we can see Abib here, and it's also called Nisan, and it falls at the end of March and beginning of our April. Let's find out if we can come to this same conclusion using our Bible. And we read in Exodus 9.25 when it's talking about the plagues of the hail, and the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in, in the ear, meaning the ear in this sense is flowering, and the flax was bold, but the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. So the flax and the barley were grown up during this time of the hail. We could say that it was barley season. Now when we look at the word ear, and the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, the ear in the Hebrew means Abib or Nisan, ear, green. And we see that Abib comes from that root, that meaning, green or young. When we look at history, we see that it was barley season at the end of March, beginning of April in Egypt. Barley, then ripening in the sixth month, the harvest thereof fell about the beginning of April, wheat harvest nigh a month after. When we look at history, we can see that it is in line with the Bible. We see the end of March, beginning of April, it was barley season. We can also see from another source that barley indeed ripens at the end of March, beginning of April. In the Gizar Manual, harvesting barley takes place during the fifth period, the end of March to the end of April. So what have we learned so far? We've learned that barley season helps us to find the first month, which Jesus says is the month of Abib. So when does that first month actually start? What's the first day? We can find the answer to that by noticing the moon. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And he appointed the moon for seasons. So the moon has a cycle and it helps us to understand time also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months ye shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings we see here that at the beginning of the month the trumpet was to be blown on the solemn days we also find that the blowing of the trumpet is during the time of the new moon blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on your solemn feast days so in Numbers 10.10, 10, the beginning of the month was the solemn day. The first day of the month is a solemn day where the trumpet is to be blown. 
And in Psalms 81.3, we see that blowing of the trumpet is during the new moon. So the new moon shows us that that is the first day of the month. Let's add this to what we've learned. We have the first month is during barley season, and the first day of the month starts at the new moon. Well, how many days are actually in a month? You can look up the on the internet and find out what the lunar cycle is, or you can do it the old-fashioned way, and take your take a pen and paper and chart the different phases of the moon. You can see from this picture the different phases, and the new moon is when it's dark, when it's in between the Earth and the Sun, and we see that there's 29.5 days in a lunar cycle for the moon to get from one phase all the way back to that same phase. So if we take 29.5 and round it up, we would get about 30 days in a cycle. Let's find out what the Bible says as to how many days are in a month. In the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. This is speaking of the flood, when the waters began to pour out and shoot up from the earth and shoot down from the sky. This was in the 17th day of the second month. And then we read, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated and the ark rested on the seventh month on the 17th day of the month. So we see that there are, were 150 days where the water was on the earth, and on the seventh month, the 17th day, the waters were gone or receded. Now, what have we learned? We've learned that the first month is during barley season, and the first day of the month starts at the new moon. Now we see that there are 30 days in a month. This is going to be important for us to understand as we break open the prophecies to find out what exact day did Christ die for our sins. So here's where your math skills come in. We can find out how many days are in a month by taking the information from the text and doing a little subtraction and division. We see the rains began the second month on the 17th day and they ended on the same day of the month, but on the seventh month. So if we take seven minus two, that would be five months the water was on the earth. Well, the Bible said it was 150 days on the earth. So if we take five months and the 150 days divided by those five months, we get 30 days. So that means each of those months would have 30 days in it. Well, that is the exact amount of the lunar cycle. If you round it up 29.5 and you would get 30 days in a month. Let's look at the practical application of this. Jesus, as he was going to enter Jerusalem at the triumphal entry, he stopped and he looked at Jerusalem and he started weeping and crying because he could foresee their destruction. They did not realize and recognize and appreciate Jesus as the Messiah and what he came to earth to do for us, to be that sacrifice for our sins. And he said, and they shall not leave unto thee one stone upon another because he could see and he knew the destruction of Jerusalem was going to be coming because they knew us not the time of their visitation. It is important to recognize the times in which you're living in. The people at the time of Christ did not realize the time in which they were living, the time that the Messiah was to die on the cross for their sins, for our sins. And if we can recognize that time now, after the fact, it will give strength in our faith and strengthen others as well. So let's look at how this would apply to us and our day. Let's figure out what the first day of the month is 
of the month of Abib. So in order to figure out the first day of the month of Abib, we would want to either find out, you could do it the old fashioned way and get your, cat, get your piece of paper and log the different cycles of the moon, or you can look at your internet and ask your parent to help you if you're um, not allowed to get on there by yourself. Look up Moon Cycle 2019. So we're going to do that. And we're going, I'm going to go to the timeanddate.com. And if I scroll down, I can see that here, we remember that it was at the end of March, beginning of April was that time of that barley harvest. Once we find March and April for the barley harvest, we want to find out when the new moon is. The new moon is March 6th. Now that's a little early because that barley harvest was the end of March or beginning of April. So we need to go to April 5th. So the new moon on April 5th would be the first day of the month of Abib for 2019. In part two, we are going to continue to add on to this knowledge in order to discover when exactly did Christ die on the cross and what prophecies did that fulfill so that we can be strengthened and understand that Christ is our Passover lamb.